The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Many, many Christians judge their spiritual growth by how they feel. They judge it completely on feelings and this is where Satan can totally deceive and seduce you. Most of us claim we walk by faith and not by feelings. But in all practical truth, when it comes down to the real issues, we do live primarily and judge our spirituality by our feelings and not by faith. We say we walk by faith, but we get down and discouraged because we are judging who we are and what we are in God and we're judging our growth in Christ by how we feel and our feelings. I'm talking about Christians who doubt that they are growing spiritually. People who read the Word, they pray, they go to church, and deep in their heart they love the Lord. But as one told me recently, he said, I just don't see much progress in myself. I should be so much stronger in the Lord. I should be more heartbroken. I used to weep and pray, but I don't retain much of what I hear from the pulpit and what I'm taught. And I really feel I'm stunted in my spiritual growth. A lot of us feel that way. We, we, we judge ourselves and we hear so many sermons. We hear so much of the word and we retain. We feel like we retain so little of it that it is not caused the growth that it, we believe that should have created in us or caused. First of all, I believe you can be growing in grace and not know it and not being able to discern it. Colossians 2.19, Paul speaks of the body being the body of Christ being nourished in every joint and fiber of the being from the head the nourishment now I want you to know the head is Christ and he never sleeps and I want you to know right now that he is light he is emanating life Christ is always emanating the life that is in him if it's not giving if it's not nourishing it's not life life produces life Jesus Christ if you're abiding in Christ you have a life flow in you. I'm going to tell you something right now. If you have Christ in you, you're abiding in Christ, and you're trusting in Him, and you love Him with all your heart, you're growing even when you're sleeping. You may wake up in the morning, and I don't care how you feel, it doesn't matter because there is a life force in you. When, when you are picked up out of the kingdom of darkness, you are planted in Christ, the Bible said. You're translated and you're planted like a tree and you take roots. What do roots do? They draw. They suck life out of that good soil. You've been planted in good soil. You've been planted and rooted in Christ. It's impossible to be rooted in Christ without drawing life because He's the one who puts the life in you. He's the one who, in other words, infuses you with that life power. He is an emanating life, always giving, always flowing. And He said He shall be in you through the Holy Spirit, a river of living water springing up. Why is it so difficult? Why is it that when you even sin and when you fail, you are grieved as you've never been grieved before? Because you don't know it, but you're growing. You don't sense it, but you're growing. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Now that's a covenant promise. When you are in Christ and you're simply believing His Word and you say, He's my Lord and He's my God, He has made you a promise that you are going to flourish. And that word flourish means bloom like a bud bursting with light. You shall flourish. You're going to bloom. You're going to burst out with life. And you shall be bearing fruit even in your old age. Whether you see it or not, whether you feel it or not, God has made a covenant promise to everyone that's in Christ Jesus. You are rooted. There is light flowing in you. Whether you feel it or not, whether you sense it or not, whether you desert it or not, there is light flowing in you. You are changing. And he said, you will flourish in the house of the Lord. You will have life bursting out. And you don't know it until one of your children or one of your friends are in trouble. And suddenly they call upon you and you go to their house and when you thought you had not learned anything and you thought you were spiritually dry, out goes a river of comfort and compassion. Things that you have learned when you need it, it's there. And secondly, we falsely judge our spiritual growth because of the repetition and sense of boredom that's common to all men. 
the, the, the repetition of life, the things that we do over and over again that sometimes become boring to us. It's common to all men. We get this feeling, let me say it like this, I must not be growing or increasing in grace because I'm doing the same thing I've always done. I've been praying, that's, I've been doing that before, nothing has changed. I read my Bible, I go to church, I sing in the choir, or I'm an usher, but every Sunday I get up, I do the same thing, and I, I hear the word in every service, I search my heart, but I've always done that. I feel my capacity, I do what I'm supposed to do in the church, but I don't feel like I'm doing anything special for the Lord. I don't feel like I'm, I'm accomplishing anything special for the Lord. There's no variety. That's a lie from the devil. That is a, this can get you under more condemnation and it can rob you of the grace of God. And this, this is something you've got to understand. When you go to the job, for example, you get up and it, it, it's kind of boring and repetitious. It's not in doing other things or greater things or more spectacular things. It's not in doing a great variety of things. True growth in grace is doing the same thing over and over again and doing it better each time with more heart, assurance, and more love for Jesus. Grace is learning to please God and grow where you're planted and not allow the devil to put a spirit of boredom on you or say, I'm not doing anything special for God. To every usher, to every teacher, to everybody listening to me, the most important thing in the sight of God is that when you are planted in a place and you're taking root, that you do it as unto the Lord. No matter how sick you are, no matter how weary you are, and the devil tells you you're not accomplishing anything. Folks, set all of your accomplishments and all your desires to do something for God. Focus in on learning to love Jesus from your heart more than ever before. That's what he's looking for. I do this because I love him. I'm planted here. I don't judge my spiritual growth by any feelings of repetition or boredom. You can be growing in grace, yet feel that you're not increasing because you think you've lost your fire and intensity. Because you feel you've lost something that you had when you were first saved. Yes, it is possible to lose first love, the Bible said, to grow lukewarm, slothful, careless. And there are many Christians in that awful state. But Satan has done a lot of damage to Christians by making them believe that they're not as good, they're not as faithful, they're not as righteous as they once were before, that they have lost something in the Lord. But you see, all of these scriptures in the Bible that warn against lukewarmness and sloth and carelessness and losing first love, all of those scriptures have nothing to do with those who are fully planted in Christ and walking by faith. Those scriptures don't apply to you because the very fact that you're concerned about it is proof that you're growing. You would be thinking that. You would be sitting in pride and thinking everything is all right, but you see, you are concerned about it, you're thinking about it, you're praying about it, you say, oh God, I don't want to lose that first love. You're concerned about that, but that very concern is evidence of growth. The very fact that you are concerned about falling back, you, you examine your heart about growing in grace is evidence, but it's a terrible sin to doubt God's love for you and get down on yourself because your feelings tell you that you're not what you used to be. I hope you're not what you used to be. Paul the Apostle said, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forth unto those things which are before. Forget what you once were. Your position in Christ has nothing to do with tears, with mourning. It has nothing to do with something you did in your past life of, of works because you're not saved by your works. You're not saved by feeling intense. You're not saved by zeal, ambition. None of those things save you. You are saved by faith in the covenant promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not by works least any man should boast. And you can look back at all the past good things you've done and say, I felt so good when I was doing that. But folks, you live on a constant faith in the covenant promises of God. Unshakable, no, how, no matter how you feel, no matter how many lies the devil tells you or anything else, you know that God's going to keep his word to you. He said, I'll keep you from falling and present you faultless before his glory with exceeding great joy. 
If you lay hold of all of these promises, I will cause you to walk in my ways. You lay hold of those promises of God. It doesn't matter how you feel or what you have done in the past because right now you are walking in faith and standing on the word of God. Forgetting those things that are behind me. Boy, I'm so glad I can forget some of those things that are behind me. He said, I'm, I'm, I forget the past and I move on now. Don't let your past hound you. Don't let your feelings of, of what you once were try. Don't judge your present condition by what you once were and try to measure if you are as red hot or as tearful, as prayerful as you once were. You look on to what God has promised to make you. If you'll stand on his promises, whereby we are given are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. How do we get his divine nature in us? By appropriating the covenant promises. Whereby given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, whereby we become partakers of the divine nature and learning how to escape the corruption that's in the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. How can you tell if you're growing? Evidence number one, when you find yourself in a crisis or temptation, you quickly run to the Lord for answers and comfort. One of the sure signs that you're growing is that when you get in trouble and difficulties come or a crisis, you don't get on the telephone, you don't call somebody, you don't sit around talking about it, you run to Jesus. You go immediately to the Lord. You have learned that you have a place to go. Those that are growing in the Lord, tell it all to Jesus first before you tell it to anybody else. That is the sign of growth. You take everything to God. Your family, your children, your grandchildren, your job, your career, everything, you take it to Jesus. And if you don't have any other place to go, it's because you, you have not really focused on where you should be. Run to Jesus immediately. Here's another sign. You're growing spiritually when you depend less and less on outward signs, physical evidence, and inner voices. This is a sign of maturity in Christ when you no longer challenge the Lord to produce or prove himself to you with, with visible evidence or some kind of a sweet, still voice. You know, God does speak. He, he said, my sheep know my voice. They hear when I call. Yes, I do believe that he speaks, but he speaks to us, the Bible said, these last days through his son. The scripture says, God, who at other times, at various times, and in different ways, spoke in time past unto the fathers by prophets. Now he has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Now, those words are recorded here in this book. And then the Bible says and promises the Holy Ghost will come. And he, the Holy Ghost, shall teach you all things and bring to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. He said, he's already spoken. Here it is. This is the spoken word of God. And when you depend on inner voices or you have to have God give you signs. Now, see, that's all right under the Old Testament. You can ask for a fleece in the Old Testament, you know, like Gideon did. But see, we're in the New Testament. We don't need the feast now. We, we have the Son of God who is speaking clearly and we have the Holy Ghost abiding in us, bringing that word to life. Now we open ourselves to incredible seduction when we listen to those little voices without having gone first to Jesus, having searched His word and allowed the Holy Ghost to speak to us through His word. Folks, you are mature when you don't have to challenge God anymore. You don't have to have God prove anything to you anymore. You don't have to have a still small voice in you anymore. You believe that He's going to see you through no matter what because you're in His hand.